So let's talk about why you've chosen to communicate in the way that you do. Because I feel like we're kindred spirits in that way, <laughs> but I want to hear you say it. So yeah. like what what gave you the umption, the unction, I'm sorry, to start on social media? What was your strategy and like how do I want to approach this? Like tell me all of it. It's so funny. So I played with kind of my voice on social media for a long time. And I kind of tried to figure out what would work and what wouldn't work, right? So um, I started my platform. I started doing content mostly around my brother in his case. And then I started like branching out to other cases and situations. And I was like, how do I do this, right? So on the one hand, I was a little scared because I'm like, I'm about to graduate law school. I got to be a lawyer one day. I don't want somebody to see this and be like, oh, she too ghetto. We're not going to hire her, right? Because when I go into the interview room, obviously, my voice is a little different, right? Yes. My vernacular is a little different. Mm -hmm. And so that was like a fear of mine in the beginning. So it's funny, like when I did the Russia Ukraine video, mm -hmm. I was just like, I have been playing for so long, like code switching and stuff, and it just wasn't hitting how I wanted to hit. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just explain this to them the way I explain it to my friends all the time, mm -hmm. right? So even in law school, reading those cases is terrible because the language is old and outdated we don't really understand it and so i would explain the cases to my friends right just like we was having a regular conversation mm -hmm. and they'd be like oh, okay i get it like okay and it's easier to remember yeah so when i did the russia ukraine video i just was like i'm gonna just put it out here like i was just talking to my friends and it's gonna do what it's gonna do and then it did it yeah and it, it continued did to do it what needed to be done <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> and it continues to do it and so that's when i realized oh there's an audience i can tap into that i've been trying to reach for a minute but i just couldn't figure it out yes. and it was almost like well you're talking to me now so yes. now i want to hear you yes. right yes. Yes. so i think that's the difference like i give the example all the time of if you talk to me in french i don't speak french mm -hmm. so no matter how serious this conversation is supposed to be Ooh, sorry yeah. for you because I don't get it right yeah. but if you come talk to me in English I'm gonna get the whole message right yeah. and I think that's the same for you know speaking in Ebonics or AABE is like them folks before that was like you talking in autumn syllables that's French <laughs> right like mm, no I don't, I don't get it you ain't talking to me mm. but when I talk like you now it's like oh I want to hear what you got to say right yeah. like mm -hmm. even if you don't know what I'm talking about in the beginning it just sound familiar yeah so then you want to be yes. included you know what it's I mean? that familiarity piece that I think has made has given us an opportunity to sustain ourselves with the work that we do yes. because we are introducing people to something that does matter to them they just didn't know it matters to them Absolutely. they didn't know that they cared politics and history specifically i have seen it turn people's ears off put them directly to sleep yes. and it's just like nah bro but if you only knew if you could only decipher what was in between these lines on these pages exactly. you would feel completely different about yourself and how you move in the world and so i really think that familiarity concept of talking to people, meeting them exactly where they are, and then being your authentic self because then people feel like they can they can connect with you. Do people call you like they internet cousin? Oh, what? Like what? I got sisters, grannies, aunties, nieces, all of that. At second mom. Yes, and yes. And it's people invested in at <laughs> We are also very skilled in marketing. Yes. We found a way to do it. Like yes. marketing is a concept. It doesn't have to be bad. Exactly. It does not have to be exactly. bad. Things are only bad when they come with bad intentions or make somebody suffer. But when the goal is liberation, I think the options and the ceiling is limitless. Exactly. I agree 100%. And we marketing it well because they didn't buy in, right? And they, the people they that rock with us, they rock with us for the You can't say nothing to us. Mm -hmm. They're going to get you right <laughs> and they and they need it and they crave for it i think mm -hmm. that's the beautiful part about it is like i get in the comments and stuff all the time where people are like give me more can you explain this to me and it's yeah. like now i got you invested now yeah. i got you hooked so now we can help make change yeah and i think that's the most important aspect of it is being able to help facilitate change in our own communities where now we become a powerful voice mm -hmm. i think that's the important like we, we're doing our thing so. yeah and then we are i i feel like the kings and the exes and the and the Davises, the Bakers, they would all be proud. Look, they better be, they better be standing behind us the yeah. way uh, we out here working. Yeah. And my brother was 15 years old, wrongfully convicted, sentenced to 50 years to life in prison. And I sat in trial both times and I'm listening to the evidence like, oh, where'd y'all get this from? And so, what made me even go to law school and like pursue what I'm doing now was like when I was in the courtroom, the only person who looked like me was a defendant. Nobody else in the courtroom, not the jury, not the judge, no one else, maybe an officer or two, right? But for the most part, nobody looked like me. 
And so that's when I realized, like, oh, this is not going to work. And I need to try to do something to, like, help this situation. And so I say that because I realize, like, no matter how hard you work sometimes, no matter how much effort you put in to try to save someone, um, there's so much racism and discrimination in our system of justice that it could easily go wrong. And you can do everything you wanted to do. And so I think the hardest part is like, I saw how it affected me. I saw how it affected my family. I see how it affects my brother. My fear is if I do that and I'm not successful, I know what that's gonna do to someone else's family. Yeah. And so having to kind of, you have that burden on your shoulders, it almost makes you wanna work harder and put more effort in, but it's also a reality in the back of your head of like, how do I deal with that if it doesn't go in my way, yeah. you know? so. It's scary. So you've alluded to it, and I know you shared it with your audience, but maybe my audience has to see your work. What is actually going on with your brother? Yeah, so he is still in prison. Um, we are trying to petition basically to get him a new sentence um, based on new laws in California that um, basically say, so he was convicted as an aider and a better, right? Which means like, you may not have been the person that committed the crime, but if we together, yeah. and it happened i'm yeah. just as guilty as you right and so that's sort of his conviction but in california now um there are different laws that say mm, we don't really move like that no more or you know there's some little off about how y'all handle that situation mm -hmm. so right now we are headed to the court of appeal to mm -hmm. see like hey this applies to his case and y'all already said in a couple other cases that like this deserves to be resentenced so yeah. why not add him in yeah. Um, and so working on that right now to see like what the Court of Appeal says and then honestly like just putting the energy out there of like y'all need to know his name like y'all need to know who Brandon Burn Burns is right because we need help right if this doesn't work we're gonna have to use our other resources to try to help him get relief. I'm glad you guys are at that point I'm glad you guys have the opportunity that is phenomenal and we pray obviously for the best outcome possible um, but before we cut before we end today, I want to highlight something else that you said. You were there to witness it, you study it, and so you are aware that there's so much racism in our legal system. Yep. And there was this gentleman, I don't know his name, you probably might know who he is because he's trying to get a name for himself like uh, Miss Candace Owens in that community. But I saw a community and some officer was on the street getting interviewed and someone asked him, do you think there's any racist policies? He said, no, I don't know any racist laws. Like, raw, laws can't be racist. I cut the, the video off immediately. <laughs> because what I need you guys to know, if you don't know already, racism was codified. Not, and here's the thing, it wasn't codified when we got here. But when they realized we had too much freedom, there were too many loopholes, they quickly put things in writing, whether they were in, they were called slave codes at the time. I know we call them now people who were enslaved. But slave codes at the time, black codes, Jim Crow laws, all of it codified ways to discriminate us, to this discriminate against us, to limit our movement, to limit our bodies, to justify the sale of us, to, to even, not even just in legal documents, but in registrars. Yes and registrars and accountant books, how much these people with these characteristics are worth and or not. Yep. Freedom papers to limit how we could be moving on and off plantations, even if they were on somebody else's orders, like it's been codified. And like, I'm not saying there's no getting rid of that because progress and eventually there, there may come a day, but we cannot, we do not beat, we <laughs> We do not beat racism just by assuming a colorblind approach right. because you can't assume a colorblind approach to things that are not colorblind. All right, YouTube subscribers, that's enough for you today. In order to get the full conversation, you're going to have to subscribe to us on Patreon.